always think color is only an aesthetic value, but it is a sensory perception like music. Uh, it has emotional effects, it has synesthetic effects, it has associate effects, and it has effects also within the creation of the environment, obviously. What we do not understand about color, or what most people do not understand about color, is that it also affects psychology, it affects neuropsychology, it affects visual ergonomics, it affects psychosomatics, it's part of biology, and these are all aspects that we must use in the creation of the architectural environment. And we break that down also again in using color psychology, which is also in marketing, obviously. And it's not being very well taught in uh, the regular education for architects, interior architects, designers. That we have to consider that whatever we do within the architectural space, we are affecting human beings. We're affecting what is carried out in an architectural space. Is it a hospital? Is it a school? Is it a working place? Is it an office? Is it industry? There are all different functions, and this is where the aspect of color plays a very important role, not just as an aesthetical value, not as an aesthetical, but taking all research, which we call interdisciplinary research towards the use of color in architecture or whatever it might be, placing it together for the benefit of human beings, for their work, where they work, where they have their health regarded where they learn. It's something that's always forgotten. So this research, this, this integration between art and research, that's, that has to be integrate art and research together for the most optimum environments, that is something that was started in 1934 with someone called the first color consultant, which was Faber Byrne. Later on, in 1957, in Europe, they started an international association of color consultants where these aspects had to be included in the curriculum. It had to be different. Because a lot of people call themselves color consultants and they were dilettants. The ICC then existed uh, since 1957, 58. It was... Uh, it was actually started with architects, uh, educators, uh, artists, psychologists from 12 countries. In 1991, this whole concept went to the United States, where it was also uh, included into a curriculum from ICC. From there on, it moved into Japan, which now has six schools. So it's worldwide now to teach truly color from the standpoint of thinking about human reaction and for the benefit of human beings. This is what's so very important. Not that something is created just by the taste or by a personal intuition of whoever is creating a certain architectural project, but actually with science in the background to know what is going to happen.